Sunday night, July 26, 2009, WWE Night of Champions just off the air, and it has been indeed a Night of Champions as several new champions were crowned. Damian Nelson, the man they call Kaz, and David Harrell here live with you in the ESPN studios, as Frank says, in beautiful downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Gentlemen, coming off the heels of WWE Night of Champions, what a difference a week makes after TNA's Victory Road uh, came off with a bit of a dud last Sunday night. Quite a difference in talent, obviously. So, some of these matches actually made sense, had a good flow to them. Overall, I'd say it was a 7 out of 10. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Kind oh, of now. That, that same uh, ballpark there. A 7 out of 10. Compared to what we saw last week. On a non-major month. That's pretty yeah. substantial. That is. Well, the questions going into this pay-per-view were, who would be Chris Jericho's tag team partner? And would this indeed surpass TNA's victory road from last Sunday night on pay-per-view? Let's talk about the card as it was, where we saw new world champions from at least two of the three WWE brands, a triple threat shocker, and some excellent women's wrestling. WWE Night of Champions from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, obviously the old home of ECW, the uh, Extreme Championship Wrestling before WWE got their hands on it. And uh, before we start talking about match-by-match results, let's go now to the phone lines. Uh, now, actually, we're not going to go to the phone lines yet, sorry, false alarm gentlemen, but let's go to the phone numbers. 414-276-ESPN, 414-276-ESPN, or all over the world at 1-800-990-ESPN. Again, that's 1-800-990-ESPN. We're also streaming live at pwrshow.com. Again, that's pwrshow.com. Where the shout box is going, the chatmosphere is going, the forum is going, and we're also following your comments on Twitter. PWR show on Twitter. Tweet so now. now that we got that out of the way, we've got some phone callers who obviously are eager to talk about WWE's Night of Champions. But before we get to the phones, David Hero, Frank Costantino, we have, I would call it a major announcement, one of the biggest interviews to come to the Pro Wrestling Report coming up next. Monday night, not tomorrow, next Monday night, the first interview that this superstar is giving to a media outlet, it is us, the Pro Wrestling Report, the only ones that could bring it to you next Monday night, right here on 540 ESPN Live, right after Monday Night Raw, none other than Mr. Kennedy. Well, no, 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 Mr. Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. You don't want to get a cease and desist, do you? The superstar from WWE, formerly known as Mr. Kennedy, live. Next Monday night on this very program, now, of course, he's going to be here on this show. Ken Anderson, he will be on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. And uh, are you going to ask him about Bob Holly? <laughs> should I? God, I think we should. Kennedy, it's no holds barred. We can ask yeah. anything, right? Of course. Kennedy, next Monday night, tell all your friends, get the word out, join us, and you will be able to call in and talk to Ken Anderson. Next Monday night, right here on the Pro Wrestling or Report. Or Mr. Formerly known as Kennedy. Well, Kennedy. If, I thought maybe you'd yell at me, get hot about it again. Well, you got to call him formally. Someone's going crazy with the drops in the back. But anyway. Hey, do you think we have, we'll, be, we'll be back by next week? We'll, we'll, address, interview? we'll address that situation later. <laughs> Let's go buddy. to the phone lines. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Let's go to line one. We've got Jamie from Rochester, New York. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Jamie. Hey, Jamie. That. It was a great team tonight. That right. that triple threat match what got me. It, it was awesome. That was the best book match I've seen in a long time. 
it was just good. And then the CM Punk and Jeff Hardy, um, that that was okay with me. But the Big Show, they, now they surprised us on that one. Well, they, they, who did you think really it was going to be? Oh, there was a lot of talk. It was going to be Chris Masters. Um, everybody wanted to be Christian, including me, but I guess it was turned out to be Big Show. Now, did you watch Victory Road last week? Yes. And compared the two, is there a comparison? There, no, there's no comparison. Night Champions, my, my opinion, blew out Victory Road. Okay. You know, and you got to figure the Raw and ECW and SmackDown rosters. You know they picked it up this week because they they heard how bad the TNA pay per view was. They don't want to be lumped in the same group of guys. A, a perfect point when they're almost basically back to back per se. Even the Divas. I mean, they didn't want to have a yeah. Charmel and Jenna Morasco match. And what it does, and maybe the fans out there will will differ with, with us or or agree with us. It makes you can now look at both products and say, what is the difference? Is it a production thing? Is that a talent thing? Is it you put it all together, and after watching tonight's Night of Champions, it tells you that TNA still has a long way to go. And production's a big part yeah. of it. Because they can exactly. hide a lot of things with you know their production that TNA hasn't learned yet. Because the yeah, talent, yeah. I think, is, is close. It's similar. But production now, value is different. Now they got SummerSlam to go. Now, this is what I was thinking. Since they got the Cena and Triple H and Orton feud over, maybe... Oh, it's not over. Maybe I'll speak to what Frank's been saying a long time now. Put Mark Henry against Orton. It's the summertime. Please put Mark Henry against Orton. It has Cena and Triple H do some kind of Hell in the Cell or Last Man Standing match. It then have, I guess, John Morrison in the mix now yeah. for the World Heavyweight title. Morrison wasn't even on the show tonight. Just realized that. Or did I miss? Well, him? he's not a champion. You're looking at me like, well, no, he's not a champion. Half of the card wasn't champions, Dave, because they were defending the titles against challengers. <laughs> Just because you're sitting in that one guy's chair doesn't mean hey, you have I'm to be. Yeah, I'm not ringing a, a bell. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, Jamie from Rochester, New York. We got a lot of phone calls. We want to open up the lines. Thanks for calling again. The number four one four two seven six ESPN or all over the world at one eight hundred nine ninety. ESPN 1 800 990 3776. We'll also be taking your comments and questions from the chatmosphere at pwrshow.com and also on our Twitter account at pwrshow uh, at Twitter. So let's go down the lineup of the matches uh, before we move on to Elliot in New York, who's waiting on line two. First match of the night was Legacy, the team of Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase Jr., going up against Chris Jericho and a partner to be named tonight. There was a lot of speculation, as the caller said just a minute ago, about who that partner would be. It ended up being the big show, which I don't think anybody expected, which, again, I give WWE props on that. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect that, you know, whatever he was wearing in the ring tonight either. It was old school. Yeah. It's it's not a singlet, but it was something like that. Right. Chris Jericho perpetuates the upcoming angle with Edge before announcing his partner. Uh, And Jericho, it it just almost doesn't get any better when a wrestler's standing in the ring of the microphone than when he is. Yeah, yeah. He makes you listen, you know. He's he's a he's a he's a great talker. Perhaps the best interview right now in wrestling. Now we thought going into perhaps I think Kennedy next week is going to be the best interview in wrestling. Oh well, yeah. By the way, we'll be plugging that all night, so get ready for it. <laughs> uh, but uh, you thought Dave going into this match that Legacy would walk out with the straps because, as you asked the question, when's the last time they won a match? Yeah, they haven't won a match. You know, I figured okay, it's it set up perfectly. They don't have anything for Big Show. Chris Jericho, you know, really has no one to work with right now. I figured Big Show would somehow cost Jericho to lose the tag belts. They could then go into their little program together, and then Legacy finally becomes a viable player, you know, in wrestling on Raw. Because right now, I mean, with no disrespect to the Job Squad, they're the Job Squad. That's it. That's all they got. And in uh, I was kind of surprised, but in a way, a little bit disappointed that it was the big show, only because I was thinking, maybe they really surprised us on this one, because it is a pay-per-view. So I was surprised, but disappointed at the same time that it was him. Now, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if now, tomorrow night, Monday Night Raw, Legacy somehow defeats Big Show and uh, Chris Jericho. That would make sense. They did but, cut that promo later in the night, talking about uh, not being the champions yet. The tag team champions. That's their key that word. Is. Yet being the key so word. if it doesn't happen tomorrow night, boy, it better happen soon because then that promo is just... Well, you know, they need to do something with those guys. I mean, they're two young, talented guys. 
that haven't done anything except save Randy Orton week in and week out. Maybe that's why Randy Orton keeps him around. Well, there was they did have DiBiase take on Orton a few weeks ago, maybe as a temperature check to see where he was singles-wise, to see how the fans would react. Do you think we can push this guy's face possibly in the next three to six months? And I thought DiBiase did okay against Orton. It wasn't bad. But and you're right. They're either going to put them together for a while, then give them the straps, or just break them up at some point. In the chat atmosphere at PWRshow.com, the user by the name of Wales J says, yeah, but Javasi now jobs to everyone. The Colognes, Edge, and Jericho, now Big Show and Jericho. I think the reason this happened tonight is because you guys remember the Andre, Andre the Giant shirt where his hand was on it? Yes. Well, now they're just going to sell Cody Rhodes with the Big, print, big Show's handprint on his chest. Yeah. Those are devastating. Cody. Those are devastating. You know, it's one thing to do the job, then all of a sudden you get, you know, beat up by Big Show. Yeah. Well, it was uh, Jericho and the Big Show walking out still, the unified tag team champions. From there we saw CM Punk come out and uh, try to prove to the Philadelphia audience that he was the heel, and he had a lot of funny things to say, specifically You're paying attention, blaming, for the first two minutes of it, yeah. blaming the parent, singular, of the fans for uh, allowing them to be Jeff Hardy fans because then they're just throwing how much they support the non-straight-edge lifestyle that Jeff Hardy lives. See, they had to go out there with CM Punk, and he had to cut that big heel promo in Philadelphia, which is a Ring of Honor background, which is an ECW background, yep. and those fans like a CM Punk. And they had to make sure that when Punk came out, he would be booed out of the building. And even though there was a painful promo to sit through, especially after the opening match, right? you know, I guess they uh Do you think that wanted. was mission accomplished there though? I think so. I mean, it's hard for these fans to not cheer for Jeff Hardy, but they made it just it's hard for me not to. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. But you know, they wanted to make sure that Jeff Hardy was the clear baby face in that right. match tonight. And now, uh now what do you do with CM Punk? Do you have do you have a feud for at least another pay per view? Oh yeah. There's another pay per view match. Maybe Elliot in New York has something to say about this. Let's go to line two here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Elliot, you are live. Hey, guys. Hey, Elliot. Elliot. Uh, I got two things to say about Night of Champions. One, Big Show looked ridiculous in his new ring gear. I don't <laughs> look like a tall Kurt Angle. He looked ridiculous. And uh, More than a tall Kurt Angle. A, a big, tall. He was a double-wide Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle with a beard. He looked ridiculous. But that's I digress. Second, I it was a good part of you. I, uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. I think the ending to the triple threat match was, uh, I didn't like it. I liked the match itself. It was a good match. I didn't expect such a good match out of it because I didn't enjoy the WrestleMania 24 match. Mm -hmm. But the ending, I think it should have been different. I think it should have been a lot. Uh, it should have been something else. What would you have done? When they did the whole double uh, submission thing, the bell should have been rung. And okay. tomorrow announced... That's it. The title will be vacant, and then, then, have some type of match at SummerSlam to decide the new champion, and you could throw you could throw in whoever and whatever, and you know play with that for a few weeks. I think they should have did that. Well, here's the problem with that, and from what I've been hearing, is that the you know the office knows that the fans are tired of having the same guys in the same matches, and when you do that, and then you bring back another triple threat with the same three guys at SummerSlam. I think the fans are eventually going to turn on the product. Or even, or even they could have did this. They could have did a tournament. They could have done a tournament, eliminate the guys left and right, and then they could have had it down to a guy such as. But do you think Randy they've Orton built up a, MVP? Do you think they? But, but do you think they've built up enough guys that the tournament would be believable that other guys w would have a shot at it? I think so. On on people on Raw. Yeah. 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 I think so. If if they opened it. Um, to the whole company, then it would have been it would be very excellent. But just strictly on Raw brand, I think it's believable. They, you have MVP on there. They had Miz going for something a little bit for a while. They have Kofi Kingston, who's hot right now. Okay, so, so, so stop right there. So if you put together a six-man tournament, the first three guys are John Cena, Triple H, Randy Orton. And then you said the Miz, MVP, and Kofi Kingston. No, it would have to be an eight-man tournament. It wouldn't be six men. Well, right, but I'm just saying the first three you mentioned – are three of the mid-card guys that haven't done a whole lot lately, with the exception of Kofi. And MVP, and then you throw in a guy like Jack Swagger and Henry. If you do that, the last five guys that you mentioned, they have to be pushed up somehow to the top. Because I think as you as a fan, if 
Orton would win or Triple H would win, you'd be, ah, oh, again. You know, you, you, I like your idea, but in order for it to work, one of those latter guys that you mentioned has to, has to be in the final, however it's done. Uh, otherwise, you, you're going to get a stale product and. Well, that, was are, that was my idea. No. I might be wrong, but you know. No, 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 no you're no. not wrong. I at all. like it. Believe me, you're not I'm wrong at all. It, I like your idea, but those guys at the that you the latter five have to be pushed up. You could, you could do that, and then have say MVP versus Randy Orton, and then the mid card, so so to speak, on SummerSlam could be DiBiase, Cena, Rhodes, Triple H, and then you can make those guys. You can actually give these guys yep. personality. Yep, give that, them something. Yeah, that would work. Elliot from New York, wait, thank wait, you. Oh, Go ahead. Oh, I, have to, I just have to say one thing about TNA. Last week was the first review of Order this year. Oh, I feel This year. Good. I streamed every review. I said, you know what, Victory Road could be something because I've enjoyed the last three pay-per-views uh-huh. from the TNA streamed. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to pay. I'm going to contribute. I'm very disappointed, and I'm not going to order another TNA pay-per-view, no matter what the card is, until Bound for Glory. And when I say Bound for Glory, they need to do something amazing for Bound for Glory. They need to satisfy the hell out of Bobby Lashley to keep him. Bobby Lashley the, versus Kurt Angle, Bound for Glory. I, but yeah, still, but still, he can leave right afterwards or even don't stay that long because the ball is truly in Bobby Lashley's court. He's yep. hot as hell right now. And he's, he, he ball is in court. He can go straight to MMA. He doesn't have to come stay in wrestling. He well, wants to be if wrestling. If that's the case, though, he wants to sign a contract with TNA. But, you know... How long is that contract, really? How I mean, long? At least a year. How, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you know what? I'm not a booker. I don't know everything, but I think <laughs> they should, you know, satis- keep him. make Keep him happy. Keep him as happy as possible. And also, I know he's coming next week, but I think they need to start, they need to start talking to Kennedy for Brown for Glory. Don't even have to talk to him about something. I would like to see Bob Lashley and Kennedy at Brown for Glory. Elliot from New York, thank you so much for that call here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. And as Elliot referred to, Mr. Kennedy, Ken Kennedy of WWE, formerly of WWE, on this program next Monday night. We're going to be back in just a minute. We're going to continue talking about WWE Night of Champions. We've got callers waiting on hold. However, you can call as well, the number 276 ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Damian Nelson, the cause, and Dave Hero here live with you. Sunday, 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 July 26, 2009. We're talking about WWE Night of Champions, and we are talking about looking Kevin for... Nash's luggage. What are you talking about? I certainly was not talking about a dang-on thing. Uh, <laughs> we've got the atmosphere going at PWRShow.com. You can join us on the phone lines at number 276 ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. Uh, also on our Twitter account, a couple of comments just before we took that time out. We are talking about CM Punk and that uh, promo he cut after the first match tonight at WWE Night of Champions. A uh, user by the name of VONW said, CM Punk is quickly becoming the WWE's top bad guy, in my opinion. He's just so good at getting heat. He was still a better heel in ROH, and I just hope that eventually we'll get that style of CM Punk in WWE. Is it possible to get a full heel turn? What would it take? Oh, it's a full, it, it, yeah, it's full right isn't now. It, isn't it already? Yeah. Would, Would you say that it is after tonight? Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. You don't go out there and insult the parents, you know, and make fun of all the kids and everything. And you know what? There is no hotter baby face than Jeff Hardy right now. Yeah. It, that, that, that does fit the bill there. Right, Damien? <laughs> <laughs> there is no bigger face than Jeff Hardy right now. I'm no, with you. No bigger baby face than Jeff Hardy. Let's continue on the phone lines. I believe our next caller is on line three. We've got Steve from Heartland. You're on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Hey, guys. Hey, Steve. Hey, when did Chris Jericho, I didn't see Chris Jericho pick an earthquake as tag team partner. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> What's your name? John. <laughs> what was it, a push-up <laughs> challenge where the Ultimate Warrior had to do the push-up with uh, John Tenta on his back? Yes, that's why they picked him out in the crowd. <laughs> yep. That's one of those images burned in my head. I don't even yeah. know what show it was on, but I still remember him sitting opposite the camera, about halfway up, and uh, yeah, they were picking out the fattest guy in the crowd. Right. He was wearing the flannel. Yeah, I remember that too. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was a pretty good pay per view. Definitely, anything is going to be better than last week's uh, TNA pay per view. Mm-hmm. Um, I I kind of agree with you guys. I don't understand what they're doing with the legacy too much here. Uh, it kind of seems.
Orleans, like, I don't want to say they're burying them because they're no, it's with a Orleans. But, uh, it, it, I don't know. I, I, I don't – they could have had – Big Show mess it up and had to start it, you know, have him go babyface and had him start a feud with Jericho, and that way the legacy like, could uh, keep the titles. But that's why I'm not a booker, I guess. Um, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. The women's wrestling surprised me. I was impressed by Michelle McCool. She Steve, seemed to be. Steve, what would you say the match of the night was? Best match of the night, in your opinion, on WWE Night of Champions? Oh boy. Um, I guess I'd have to say, I guess I'd have to say, uh, Punk and Hardy. As much mm-hmm. as, I don't know. I, I, nothing really, really, to be honest with you, nothing really sticks out. Jeff Hardy, head. the new world heavyweight champion in world wrestling entertainment after defeating CM Punk tonight. Steve from Heartland saying that was the match of the night. Steve, thank you for calling in. Let's go thank to you. line one. We've got Dan from Lindenhurst, Illinois. You're live with the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. What's up, guys? How What's you up, doing? Dan? Hi, Dan. Um, I enjoyed the pay per view. Um, I did not like the Michelle McCool match. I don't think the fans you did not. Did, no, I don't think you. I don't think the fans did either. Because did you notice the reaction when Michelle McCool got the pin? I think it's because care. the finish came so quick out of out of nowhere. Yeah, where, why was that? Was there an injury? Short I mean, on time. So yeah, they, usually, I, usually you'll get uh, you know the refs somewhere at some point saying wrap it up or I think whatever the, the signal punk, was. Um, you know, interview went way too long, and they had to shorten up somewhere. I think they stunk it up, as far as I'm concerned, and that's why they had to cut it so quickly. Hey, less is more. Uh, yeah. That match was very good. Okay, that was I'll one of the it. best female matches I've seen in WWE in a very long time, probably since Mickey uh, and I believe it was, was it Trish at WrestleMania 22. Probably. I'll uh, go which back. Was a I'll wow. go back. Seriously, in both three. I'll go back Absolutely. and look at it. I'll go back and look at it. Uh, the match I enjoyed was the six pack challenge. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Very fast pace. Kofi Kingston going over in that matchup. Very good spots. Uh, some things we hadn't seen in a, quite a while, if not ever, in WWE. And I, I thought Philly would be on Cena more. It's a, it, it is so. It is like a different crowd. It seems like it's like a different generation watching this since WrestleMania 22 because everybody was on Cena, on Cena, and now they're cheering him again. So it seems like it's like they're catering to new fans. Well, it's also, you know, if you can't beat him, join him. And they've been booing Cena for years. Right. And he's still there. He's still the baby face. You know, it's like... But, what, it's, but especially in Philly, though, I mean, that's hardcore town. Boo him. Oh, how long has it been since Philly was a hardcore town? To be honest with you, let's walk, let's walk away from history because fans don't remember it. I mean, I'm sure the Philadelphia fans do. There's still a lot of good shows that happen in that city. But even during the ECW championship match tonight, they kept telling us, we're in Philadelphia, you know, there's a lot of history here. We're in Philadelphia, we're in Philadelphia. At the same time trying to tell us that the new ECW is not supposed to be like the old ECW, yet telling us Tommy Dreamer is the last ECW original. Get some consistency right, and determine what that product is going to be, and don't change it for one night only in Philadelphia to uh, make Amen. us try to get some nostalgia for right. ECW. You, you know but do you, do you agree that they're catering to newer fans and not really caring about me, so to speak, because I've been watching wrestling since 1988, and I think there's a big change. They're catering to the fans that are going to buy the Jeff Hardy armbands, the Rey Mysterio masks, yep. you know, that kind of stuff right now, right. because they are going to a PG format. PG right, the, the, the kids. And you don't see them, they don't show women in, in, in the crowd anymore. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, they uh, showed um, that one woman, in, you know, in, in the promo with John Cena. Yeah, with Cena. Yeah. That's it. That's all they care about is Cena, Cena, Cena. And it's, you know, and then, and hey, hot, hot. Hot. But, 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 <laughs> I disagree with that because if you look at the new talent initiative, quote unquote, in ECW, we've seen them use ECW for what they said they were going to use it for, and that right. is to build new talent. You saw all the people that came up during the old new talent initiative, not all of them, but a good portion of them, Jack Swagger specifically being one of them, coming over to the Raw brand now. So the, it works for what they're doing. My gripe is don't try to tell me that that's still got any type of real relation to the old ECW right. because right. it I doesn't. And they tried to do that tonight. I enjoy Swagger on Raw, and I like MVP, you know, as, as the baby face. I really like that storyline, and I hope they continue with it. And my gripe with PG is, why is it PG on WWE 24-7? You mean to tell me a kid 13 years old nowadays is going to really care about WWE 24-7? Well, the, ru- the rumor is that uh, they're, they're potentially stepping away from that PG. Rating. 
Uh, no, they're not because you want to know why? Because I was watching uh, the Kurt Henning DVD on WWE 24/7, and they showed showed the match between Kurt Henning and Nick Bockwinkel, and what they do with the blood? They put it in black and white. Well, I'm, I'm I, said, sure. I said getting away from, okay. not away from. Okay. Um, and and they I'd want be the sponsors. They do because yeah, they sponsors. want the sponsors. It's not easy to get sponsors when you're uh, <laughs> choppy choppying the pee pee. Okay, Absolutely. but I, well, I understand that. But I mean, are they going to be doing that to DVDs as well? So I just got that. No, no. The no DVDs. Are, that's different. <laughs> Change the rating for each of those, right? But I saw a DVD with Austin doing his thing with the turnbuckles, and they poured out the middle finger. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, did you buy it at Walmart? Because they use the PG version. <laughs> I bought it at Best Buy. <laughs> I don't know the, the but the, as, as I said, the rumor is they're going to be walking away from the PG okay. rating down okay. the road. Dan from Lindenhurst, Illinois. I love, uh, I love your guys' show. I download it every week. It's awesome. Thank, thank you very much, Thanks, Dan. Buddy. And for those of you that don't know, you can get the Pro Wrestling Report on iTunes. Just search for the Pro Wrestling Report on ESPN Radio under the podcast segment of iTunes, the third top, uh, the third most downloaded show, the third most popular show pertains to wrestling shows on iTunes. And now PWR Prime Time is available on iTunes as well. So he was hot, wasn't he? He's getting hot. Uh, was good you know what? It was, he had some good points, some interesting points. Let's see if Daniel from Texas on line two can rival Dan from Lindenhurst. Daniel, you're live with the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Hey, guys. Hey, Daniel. I, uh, I wanted to just comment on the, a couple things the last caller said. I thought, I agree, the uh, six-man match was great. I loved how uh, Swagger basically powerbombed three people. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that was that was pretty cool. And I think it was good that they had Kofi retain it. Going into that match, it's just like the rules are just, you think a triple threat's not fair. The six-pack's totally not fair to the uh, to the champion. Well, but I, I thought I, it was the, an elimination match until Dave Hero corrected me as we were watching the show together. Because um, halfway into it, I'm like, man, nobody's been eliminated yet. Yeah, uh, that would have made more sense. That would have been, a bit, I think, you know, as an elimination match. But I liked how it ended anyway. You know, had some good spots. It was definitely entertaining. I thought it was the most entertaining match of the night. Where um, I thought the biggest, uh, with I thought the biggest rip off was the uh, triple threat match. But I thought the Michelle McCool Molina match it was uh, was awesome. And I don't mm-hmm. like. I usually don't like women's matches. Here's my question for you, Daniel. Was it awesome because of the crap they normally deliver in the WWE women's division or awesome because it was an awesome match? It was a good match. I mean, you really, I mean, they were, you know, my wife looked at me and she's like, do they really hate each other? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> wow. uh, so they can do that. They, a they wife comment. The yeah, yeah. I mean, they uh, they but, just went at each other. It was brutal. From, did she from ask you if Hulk Hogan was still around? <laughs> No, she uh, she watch oh, only because she watches Brooke knows best or something. Like oh, okay. That. Yeah. Not yeah. sure that helps the situation at all, Daniel. It, right, 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 right. Anyway. Best match of the night, in your opinion, overall. Best match of the night. Um, ah, God, you know, man. yeah, the six man. I mean, I just felt I felt the only problem I had with the 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 main event was I'm fine with CM Punk losing, but I think he should have jumped him after the match to really build that heat up to really. You know, like you guys were even asking earlier, is he heel? And then the other three guys or two guys jumped in, like, oh, yeah, definitely he's heel. But there'd be no question if he'd have jumped him after losing the match. You know, maybe even stood over him holding up the title to, to continue that feud nice and hot. But Maybe mm-hmm. if it was Raw or SmackDown, but on a pay-per-view, I don't think that's how they want it in the show. Well, yeah, I mean, because like you said earlier, Hardy's the big baby face. Yeah, you send the fun. Gotta send him home happy. You know, if he spent yeah, 40 yeah, bucks yeah. or 100 bucks yeah. for a ticket. yeah. No, I, I get what they're doing. You know, I was talking about something. You guys are uh, – one of the callers was talking about uh, switching up the uh, – I think it was the last caller, actually, switching up the, the brands, I guess, uh, so they're not all – or at least on 24-7. Don't make it PG clear across the board. Why don't they syndicate their old stuff, you know? I mean, they're, they're into making money. That's all they're about. Mm-hmm. Me and a whole bunch of people I know, at least, would, would much rather watch, you know, the, the heyday of wrestling at like, you know, one or two in the morning instead of Andy Griffith. I still believe I still believe there should be a wrestling network. Um yeah. and I, I mean, think there's so much of it now. I think whether it be a wrestling network or a partnership with a network sort of like I would say versus, which is uh, always bleeding for or always looking rather for, for content and and initially aired a bunch of MMA stuff. I think that uh, there is so much content. Uh but at the same time they gotta worry about generating revenues for that and they gotta sell the product and all that stuff, and well, frankly, no, with all the networks that are out there now on cable and, and satellite TV, especially, 
there really is a void, and that void is a, a 24-hour but wrestling here's channel. the thing. If you put on, if, if they syndicate it and they put all the old stuff on, where it's the New Age Outlaws, where it's Diesel, and other guys that are now on TNA, it's kind of promoting the competition. Well, you know, the they're not competitions. You guys were talking about that earlier. You can't compare. Last week's pay-per-view, all it made me realize was TNA should be compared to Ring of Honor. The, you know, those two are in the same league. They are not in the WWE's league. I read an article a while back as some vice president of talent relations or marketing or something. He talks about how, um, you know, TNA is a professional wrestling organization and we're an entertainment, you know, company. And that pretty much sums it up. I mean, you know, they, that's, that's why they do the uh, yep. guest host on Raw. You know, that's why they can do these cross promotions with, like, uh, Robot Chicken. You know, that's why they have their own movie. I mean, there's no comparison whatsoever to TNA. Daniel, thank you for Good those point. interesting and very well put points here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. If you want to join us by phone, the number you can call is 276-ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. We're also live at pwrshow.com in the chatmosphere. Uh, We're not going to take that guy's call tonight, are we? No. Okay. Also, we've got Anthony from California waiting on line three. We'll take that when we come back from this timeout. Here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Damian Nelson, the man they call Kaz, and Dave Hero. We are live Sunday night, July 26, 2009. Thank you for tuning in as we talk about WWE Night of Champions. We've had some interesting callers so far tonight. We want you to be a part of that action. Give us a call at 276-ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. Again, that's 276-ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. We're also live here in the Chatmosphere at PWRShow.com. That's PWRShow.com. And uh, we're also taking your tweets at Twitter. And earlier tonight we announced the big interview for next Monday night, not it's tomorrow humendous. night, next Monday night, the WWE performer formerly known as Mr. Kennedy. Hell, not, we're not, still not doing it in the case of tonight's promotion. Kennedy! Anderson! Next Monday night, right here in his first interview since his release from WWE on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. WWE Night of Champions, continuing along the results of the match we have not yet talked about in detail, but a couple of callers have referenced it, and that is Michelle McCool defending that championship tonight in what I thought was a tremendous match against Molina. From the get-go, when McCool Great start to the match. kicked Molina off the apron when she was doing her entrance, that was the tone of the night. They took bumps all over the place. They innovated as far as WWE women's wrestling goes, and they delivered a quality, quality matchup tonight. And I never would have guessed that Michelle McCool, a former uh, diva hopeful. Maybe she's getting trained by a certain dead man. He's walking. Yeah. Well, like a caller said a, a couple of calls ago. Did they, you know, his wife was watching. Did they really hate each other? When you're seeing that, you know you've got you've, you're hooked. Yeah, now, I mean, now you're emotionally hooked. Just the, the start of the match set the tempo for the whole thing. It was very well done. We saw a lot of good moves in that matchup, as I said. And this, I've talked a lot about how bad the WWE Women's Wrestling presentation is. And they have great wrestlers. They have several great names who can bring it and perform. I would have never thought Michelle McCool was one of them. But let's also not forget who she worked with. Yeah. Yeah. Melina, very solid worker. Mickey James, another very solid worker. They're not having diva searches versus diva searches anymore. Now, Melina had a stand-in on, uh, what was it, Raw or SmackDown last week? SmackDown? It looked like a stand-in because it didn't look like Melina. Yeah, she looks different every once in a while. Very, very different. She has like the Drew Barrymore syndrome, you know? <laughs> or she's like that that uh, when Jerry had the girlfriend on Seinfeld that, uh, you know. All depends on which way, the which way you're looking at her, yeah. yeah. But anyway, an amazing matchup, an excellent yeah. matchup. One of the best, like I said, since WrestleMania 22, I believe, when uh, Mickey James took on Trish Stratton. Now think about this. We've had a couple callers say they enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. One of the best you've seen maybe in three or four years now. If the WWE people in the back see that, hear that, there, there's your model match. And the other divas and the other female wrestlers goes, guys, this is it. This is what we need to deliver each time out, but does at least this, to that intensity. Does the significant, 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 <laughs> significantly I'm following, I gotcha. signify 
a change in the WWE women's wrestling philosophy. It could. But it all depends on the next it's match. It's getting more competitive. you got to keep in mind, Gail Kim is sitting home tonight. Yeah. Who's a talented act. You know, Beth do... Phoenix is sitting home tonight. So they have they realized, though, how great the TNA knockouts are and say, we got to step up our game. But no one talks about the knockouts. They're talking about Jenna Maraska. Yeah, well, they should because that was uh... – did you see we put on PWRshow.com what Jenna had to say about that match? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she says it wasn't a wrestling match. It was entertainment. Well, Jenna, you didn't even do that. No. So we think they're close to it. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see what the other female wrestlers can do. And if they can match up to that, then someone who's working with them said, this is what we need to do to step up. Tonight it worked. It was a great match. Let's go to the phones and line three. We've got Anthony from California. You're live on the Pro Wrestling Report at 540 ESPN. Hey there, guys. How are you going? Hey, Anthony. Good. Um, I agree. I saw the PPV today, and I got to say the, world, the women's match was pretty good. There was like that DDT on the guardrail. Yeah. And I, I was real shocked though by the Jeff Hardy winning the world belt. I was like, wait a minute, is he supposed to be leaving? Well, from what I've been hearing, Jeff Hardy's last match is SummerSlam, and what better way to leave than to put over CM Punk? Or they can have um, on Morrison enter in the match, make a triple threat. They gotta pass the torch to somebody. <laughs> if I was a betting man, I would have a ladder match: CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy. Yeah, CM. Yeah, Punk. but they had a ladder match last month. Who was who was on the, who was on that ladder match? Jeff Hardy and Edge. Okay, but way now, to follow along, Dave. Well, I knew that. I mean, but you know, they have so they have so much that changes every time. But I can see they have to establish CM Punk as a legitimate star, not just the guy that always cashes it in in, in the money in the bank. Star and heel at the yeah. same time. And if he can beat Jeff Hardy in Jeff Hardy's match and become the new world champion, Jeff Hardy leaves. CM Punk now the top heel on SmackDown and the and, and the champ. Okay, but as a heel at that point, if that's Hardy's last match. Is it a clean victory for CM Punk? Yes. Or okay, definitely. There's because there's no reason for a screw job bending if the guy's going to be gone. He's not going to come back and get his revenge. Anthony, thank you for that call. From the uh, one more Coast. thing. Go ahead. Uh, I want to just remind everybody that next Monday will be the interview with Mr. Anderson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good job, Here Anthony. Here we go. We're going to hire you. We're going to put you on send the marketing a team. You're, send, him, send him a quarter. You report to Frank. He's in charge of marketing around here. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for calling in, Anthony. And uh, other significant things on the pay-per-view, the new ECW champion is Christian. Uh, Tommy Dreamer not able to retain the title in Philadelphia, you know, where ECW was born. Dave Hero, you said if he loses, he retires. Did he retire? Did he pass the torch tonight, that being Tommy Dreamer? I think he did. I mean, you know, he was, he was all teary-eyed, gives him the big hug, shakes his hand, leaves the ring, lets Christian celebrate. Like I said, if Tommy Dreamer was going to end it, tonight should have been the night because he left in front of his fans. Yeah, and, uh, you know, like I said before, I'm not a big Tommy Dreamer fan. Matter of fact, I'm not at all. Nobody is. But, uh, you know, thanks for, you know, helping out ECW at the time, gaining your fans and and doing all you can right off into the sunset and, you know, become a lawyer or whatever it wants to do at this point. Go back home to Beulah. Let's go to the phones again. We've got Austin on line one from Michigan. You're live on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Oh, hey, guys. How's it going? Um, I'm pretty sure that tonight that tonight's pay-per-view is a really good pay-per-view for, okay. for like, a couple matches. What'd you like? Um, So far, the Divas match between Melina and Michelle McCool was pretty amazing. It was a great match. Yeah, it it delivered like we've talked about uh, most this evening, and it was kind of a bit of a surprise. I wish I would have paid more attention. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Did you just, DVR. <laughs> well, no, I, I didn't DVR, but I watched it. But I wasn't paying, you know, that much, you know, that because close. you're used to okay, this yeah. is time to get a drink or whatever, and and so that that match uh, did it for you tonight. That was the thing that stands out right away, huh? Yeah, that match was really good. See, what's important for a match is how the match starts. And nobody expected Melina to be, like, drop-kicked off the apron doing her split entrance. Yep. You know, and that just set the tone. I mean, people are like, wow, okay, this is going to be different. And that happened a few times tonight, you know, in a couple other matches where things were done differently that you just haven't seen before. So do you think uh, uh, do you think CM Punk now is a heel in your mind? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to be, become a bigger heel. What I thought at first, I thought actually Punk was going to win, and, like, sooner or later... 
at Hell in a Cell where they replaced No Mercy, he was probably going to fight Undertaker to make him a bigger heel. Uh huh. I thought he was going to be like a, one of those cowardly heels and try to run away from Undertaker at first. They need to keep CM Punk as far away from the Undertaker as possible. Yeah. yeah. Because there is no way anything good can come out of that for CM Punk because you know Undertaker's not going to want to put CM Punk no, over anytime not. soon. No, good point. Austin right. for Michigan, thanks for Thank calling call. in. Continuing along, WWE Night of Champions tonight live on pay-per-view. We saw a Divas title match between Maurice and Mickey James. Another good match, certainly not as good as the earlier match between Michelle McCool and Molina, but another good effort by the WWE Divas. The butterfly belt did not change hands. I'm sorry, did change hands, as Mickey James is the new Divas champion. Good for Mickey James. She's been lost in the she's had a belt. for quite a while, yeah. Yeah, no, but we had two women's matches this evening. And they both and, made sense. Right. They both had a good flow. Which now it, you had something to compare against with TNA, which did last week, where they had two women's matches, and we were like, what the world? That didn't fit at all. Tonight, it does fit. They did It, it wasn't a great match, but it fit. It was good. It was clean. And Mickey James keeps the... I, I've never been a fan of the, the Diva champion, but it it still it fit. It was a good flow. It was a good match. And uh, she's, you can get her as a champion. You know, as, Fans you know, love Mickey James. Rip. Yeah. Three-way. Um, Look at the smirk on this guy's face. A triple here. threat match for the WWE Championship. John Cena versus Triple H versus Randy Orton. Let me say this. In each title match tonight, the champion came out last which is the way it should be. I'm a bit old school, just like you, Frank. Yep. Champion came out last, and this matchup was much better than the last time we saw the three of these men together in the ring. Actually, this was a great match, in my opinion. I thought it was solid, yeah. And I especially love the finish. However, Dave, you disagree. No, no, I like the finish. No, no, wait a minute. <laughs> no. You're changing your no, story. No, 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 I'm not. I liked what I thought was the finish. Oh. Where, you know, both guys had Randy Orton tap out, you know. I didn't like how Legacy comes but wait, in. I asked you, though, what was the logic of that? What happened was uh, Triple H had Orton in the sharpshooter, and then John Cena comes in and puts the STF on Orton as well. So Orton's in both moves. Referee Mike Kyoto. And what, what Randy was Orton can now say it took two guys to make him tap out. Orton tapped. Kyoto goes for the bell. Kyoto then realizes that he can't call this thing. He says, whoa, wait a minute. And uh, the match uh, is then interrupted by Legacy, who comes out. And then we see the finish with the RKO on John Cena with Cody Rhodes up in the air. And uh, one, two, three, Orton walks out. The slithering snake that he is, still the WWE That's champion. That's what bothered me. Legacy did not need to come out. Oh, they had to. You, you say, I don't know. How else was Randy Orton going to win? Maybe a different way, but I'm just glad they didn't do a DQ finish, even though that would have made the most sense. But having Legacy come out there and you know the the, the the screw job finish, John Cena had to get pinned because the fans you right. know don't like him the most out of him and Triple H and uh, you know what are you gonna do? I mean, well now now it's important. Legacy comes out here to keep them going in in a, in the you know, positive way or or push them. What I if, if they if they stop and even split them up real soon, then that. You know, that doesn't fit then tonight. So what let's I, get the straps on. What I thought was interesting was that Triple H was nowhere to be found after John Cena got pinned. Ooh, that's a good point. Didn't even notice that, you know. And now what's most important. Oh, wait, yeah, just because Triple H won't do the job, right? No, 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 I'm not saying that. Stephanie, I'm, right? I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying he didn't do the job. It made sense that jo- Randy Orton has never pinned John Cena before. He's beaten Triple H. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, you didn't see Triple H after the pinfall. Right. Now it's most important, where do you see Triple H the next few weeks? Where now? That's what I'm looking at. Triple what, H is going to say he got screwed, that he had Randy Orton in the sharpshooter. You'll see that tomorrow night. And that Randy Orton tapped out, he should have got the belt. Maybe Shaq will make a match. When we come back, we've got the final two matches we have not yet talked about. Dolph Ziggler and Rey Mysterio for the Intercontinental title and Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk for the world title. Also, huge controversy on the top side of TNA wrestling right now. We're going to talk about that in great detail. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. For over 10 years, the world... 
world's number one source for professional wrestling news and information. And once again, here's your hosts, Damian Nelson, Frank Cosentino, and the man they call Meathead. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Damian Nelson and Dave Hero and the man they call Kaz. Yes. The original of the man they call. No. The Italian no. Stallion. The original Italian Stallion. Well, guys, a couple more matches to talk about for WWE Night of Champions, which was live on pay-per-view tonight. And uh, the next one was Dolph Ziggler versus Rey Mysterio for the Intercontinental Championship. And Dave Hero, you said it best when you said Dolph Ziggler reminds you of who? Psycho Sid. A young, or I'm sorry, a smaller Psycho he, yeah. Sid. He said like. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way. Yeah, I can see that. He's got the leather vest, you know, the sl- slicked back hair. Leader on our Twitter account, the ruler of the world. On our Twitter account, a user by the name of Human Human Vultures had to say reference that I think Dolph Ziggler looks like a blonde John Morrison with an underbite, not as aesthetically pleasing. That's all I'm saying. That's pretty. Uh, that's really descriptive. Wrestling fan says, "I was just thinking that too." Start calling him Dolph Justice. There you go. Uh, and then the ONW on our Twitter account says, I'll give you that. Now let's just hope he doesn't stab someone with a pair of scissors or break his leg. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> just I saying. Everyone that... brings up the scissors gimmick, don't they? Well, it's controversial. And, you know, as Eric Bischoff said, controversy creates cash. Yeah, but, you know, he first came out with the squeegee. Yeah. That's how it all started. The match, Dolph Ziggler, Rey Mysterio. I liked it. Rey Mysterio retains the Intercontinental Championship. Surprising. I thought Dolph was going to go over because, you know, they got to elevate some talent pretty soon. Dolph was very impressive in this match tonight, I think. He stepped up his game again and delivered in this match. And Rey Mysterio is, is one to be counted on to always deliver in, in these big time matchups. Uh, but I thought this was good. And I think Rey winning allows this feud to continue because, as I said earlier, this feud is still pretty fresh. It, it is. has to continue. Well, I think, if you know, if Dolph is going to get the belt, it'll be on SmackDown where more people are going to watch it. I mean, Dolph, he, you know, he has the vest, he's got the chick, just needs the belt. It, it, that's the most logical step, right? right? Mm-hmm. But you have to, and I was I was hoping that he would win this thing tonight because then that would be the progression that at least I think all three of us want to happen. I think he's got the look, he's got the mic skills right now, at least he's getting there. Dolph it Ziggler didn't, it didn't happen tonight. I'm like, oh boy, please don't bury him, you know, right away because they need more stars to to get up. Dolph and, Ziggler can thank Mr. Kennedy and Umaga. Yep, because he wouldn't be where he is right now without them. It wasn't for those two guys not being there. In the chat atmosphere, user by the name of Incredible Eighty Five says Dolph reminds me of a young Kurt Hennig. I I mentioned that didn't yeah. it was said on tonight one after one of his moves. Todd Gershman, I believe, said that was absolutely perfect. Yeah. There's kind of a cross between, you know, Kurt Henning, Psycho Sid, and a little Jeff Jarrett there. Here's the thing, though. Look at all these people we're comparing Dolph Ziggler to, and you've always heard people say somebody's the next Shawn Michaels, and rarely are there comparisons. But Dolph Ziggler, you can pick some of the greatest talents in the business in the past, and you can compare them to them. I think we've got uh, – I, 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 I wrote there. I wrote down in my notes, he's got the look. He's come a long way from being a cheerleader. Mikey! Or is he Nicky? I don't know. I can't remember. They all look alike. It wasn't Kenny. We know that. No. The main event was Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk for the World Heavyweight Championship. As some of the callers discussed earlier, the assumption going into this was that Jeff Hardy had no chance, no chance in hell of winning because he was, quote-unquote, leaving the company. Well, be that as it may, if that is true or not, Jeff Hardy is the new World Heavyweight Champion and what looked to be a very, very good matchup from the two performers, CM Punk losing in Philadelphia. Now, here's the thing. Conspiracy theorists for the next two weeks are going to say how WWE purposely crapped on anybody with any roots to Philadelphia just because. How so? Why would you say that? Well, CM Punk, Ring of Honor, sort of hardcore, sort of indie. Jeff, um, not Jeff Hardy, but uh, Tommy Dreamer, same situation. He didn't win. Okay. All right. I'm saying the theorists out there. All right. The ones that accuse me of being a TNA mark. Well, you are a TNA mark. Shut up. But you should be. Okay. They adore you down there. In Orlando. They gave you, uh, you got to eat there, didn't you? He gets, no. He gets to what? go to catering. No, I, that's he, you're does, lying. he does photo Stop ops it. down there. Tillman Kilder, Mike. You're lying. I've <laughs> never been there. I've never had a piece of food from TNA. That's a lie, <laughs> you actually. Didn't 
No, thanks, guys. I've, I've already eaten TNA t I've already tonight. Eaten. It is a lot. TNA, you know. That was WWE Night of Champions on pay-per-view. We've got Gianni and Bowman waiting on the phone lines. However, we've got Frank on borrowed time, so let's yeah. talk about it. The big story we talked about last week on PWR Prime Time. Frank, you were not around to discuss with us, but we want to know your thoughts. The controversy on the top of the, the, the company in TNA. There's Inquirer-esque situation going on between Jeff Jarrett, Karen Angle, and Kurt Angle. Basically, the rumors are this. It's not rumor. We have confirmed. It's true. It's damn true. We're just saying it's true in a Kurt Angle angle. Well, we have confirmed that this (laughs) this is a problem. Let me just put it that way. You've got the head booker. You've got a man who basically owns the company company in Jeff Jarrett. You've got the face, the talent, the top name in TNA, and, their, and his former wife, all in this weird triangle. Love yep. triangle. And you've got the co-owner of the company, Jeff Jarrett, who he has been like sent that, home. He has been sent home. He's suspended. As a result of this, this shakes the foundation of Total Nonstop Action Wrestling. Frank, your thoughts? It's a trickle-down uh, problem. Because you look at, in any company, you look at the top, what's going on at the top. And if that, if there's issues there, it starts to trickle down and people start to wonder, am I in the right company? Is this really where I want to be? Am I gonna, who am I going to talk to to move up in the company at this point? And when your owner gets, or part owner, gets suspended for a week, how do you, how do you smooth that? With the rest of the, who's the spokesman to come out, talk to all the wrestlers at some point, and say, guys, this is a little hiccup. We're going to be okay. Here's, here's, you know, this is what we want the next three to six months. Stick with us. It's, it's Dixie Carter. It begins and ends with her right now. Okay. And I got to give her props. She did. She made a difficult decision, but quite frankly, she made the best uh, decision for the company. But they're still in an ugly spot. They're in a she's very ugly spot. Listen, I mean. This this could be a, a whole hour you know show just about this. She's doing what Kurt Angle is asking her to do. You know she loves Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is her guy. Remember? Whoa, what, whoa! Not what like, are you saying? Not like a Karen Angle, oh. Jeff Jarrett guy, but I mean uh, she knows that Kurt Angle is the meal ticket. People pay to see Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle doesn't like what Jeff's doing. He tells Dixie. Dixie tells Jeff to change it. They butt heads. So we've, for a while. we've heard about the click. We've heard about the days when Kevin Nash allegedly ran WCW into the ground, which he talked about on this very program and made some very interesting points about that. Has there been a controversy so far up in a wrestling company, in a mainstream wrestling company, that is anywhere close to what this is turning into? Not even no. close. And, but what it does is it, it could. It could not either. It might not either. But if, if we, you don't get – the morale up to a certain point, the other wrestlers then don't care. Then the fans start hearing this, and then then you've really got a problem. We're not getting the revenue. People aren't buying pay-per-views because no, the, the wrestlers like this company's going nowhere. I don't think nowhere. it's going to affect pay-per-views. I know it's affecting the morale <laughs> in the back. <laughs> the, they well, better yeah. hope it doesn't. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we they don't have any room to buy. Yeah. Buys. I mean, right now, I you know, certain talent in TNA, if you ask them about it, they're like, we don't yeah, want to talk about it. Yeah. We don't want to know about it. We don't want to pick sides. Nothing. It's bad. You ha- Yeah. And it has to get fixed right away. Because you're going to have do you? The damage is done. Yeah. The damage is completely done. You're Jeff Jarrett. You come back in the locker room, you know, in two weeks or whenever you come back, after you've just been sent home by the only by there's only one person that is ranked higher than you. Right. Gentlemen, this is just in. I think we have some audio from the locker room of TNA. We're all screwed. That's what. Oh, and this one's from LAX. Hey, no, it's bueno. <laughs> Dave Hero, you were here in this very studio when Jeff Jarrett sat in that very chair and Kurt Angle stood in that very room, and we did interviews with the two of them over a couple of weeks span, time frame, wow. time frame when this was happening, when was they both sort of knew what was going on, and there was true heat there. There was conversations that occurred during those interviews off air, which – Gave us the knowledge that something was going on. So it's been out there well, for a while. Know, and then that, was, we, that was back in what, late September, early late October? Late September, yeah. And I even asked Jeff. I'm like, Jeff, I go, is this an angle? 
He goes, do you honestly think I would talk about my company like this or let someone else talk about my company like this? I mean, he was on the phone all day long. And it's kind of funny. Yeah. When Jeff was supposed to be here in town, Karen Angle was supposed to be with exactly. him. Exactly. Here's the, and she canceled at the very last minute. The night before, because she was coming when I spoke to her, you know. And I was telling you earlier, you know, it's a shame sometimes, just out of respect, the things we can't say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just out of respect. We and so and we can be like some of these other sites out there and whatnot and just blow all these uh, relationships well, no, we that have we have. we have the information before the sites have. Oh, exa- and, yeah, but, you know. And, and we're not just saying it to get ourselves over. It's right. the truth. Okay, it's damn true. The yeah. two owners. Jeff Jarrett and Dixie Carter, correct? Yes. Or is, it, is there another owner involved? Well, it's Dixie's family. Okay. They, Panda they, Energy. Yeah, Panda Energy. The, 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 okay. the Carter so, family. So she basically is... Yeah, it begins and ends with her. Okay. She hired Victoria on a whim. She saw Victoria at a UFC fight in Louisville, Kentucky, didn't talk a lot over with anybody in creative, and hired her. So, in a way... That is bad, too. Oh, yeah, because originally, who's the girl that's supposed to be Mexican coming in? Sarah? Sarita. Sarita. The Canadian-Mexican. Yeah, she was supposed to have Victoria or Tara's spot. She could, if things get you know to a point where it's affecting all the wrestlers, she could fire Jeff Jarrett. She'd have to buy him out. Okay. Then if it does <laughs> trickle down. If it does trickle down where it's like, oh, God, this is not going to work, Jeff, we're going to buy you out. And, and you know, if she wants to go another direction where you, you change the, the whole atmosphere, because it's been, what, seven years? Seven years they've been around. You know, maybe it's, you know, and it all depends how things happen. Maybe, you know, in the next three weeks it's all, guys, we're okay. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> but you never know. Happen. But you never know. You know if it doesn't, it. then they need, they would need, she would need, if she wants, to get another owner in there that says, okay, we're going a different direction. And I've told this you know, to Damien before. Karen Angle is a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. You know, and I can't imagine too many men that wouldn't want to be with her. But when you look across the ring and you see her ex-husband as a guy that could snap your neck and dump you on your head, you kind of have to think twice about that. Yep. Do you think they should go after possibly opening up for ownership? I have a funny hunch that Vince Russo is going to turn this into an angle. That could really be a problem. Then. Well, they've, they've done it before, you know, with Dallas Page and Buff Bagwell over Kimberly. As I said before, the damage is done. But six months of hell, three months from now, where and what is going to be going on in TNA? Because look at look at the situation. If Jarrett's gone, there's a lot of people going with him. Who? Who goes? Half with the locker room, if not three quarters of it, is loyal to Jarrett. Half the people have their jobs because of Jarrett. Jobs. No, and they're not going to leave. But how many people are going to be asked to leave? I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's a distinct possibility. But I also think there'll be some wrestlers that I don't want. I don't want to be part of this. Let me tell you something about wrestlers. As long as the check clears, <laughs> they're happy. Yeah, but there are certain things that are worked out behind the scenes. Hey Jeff, am I going to? Don't worry about it. I'm going to get you here. Mm-hmm. You know, hey Dixie, you're going to. Yeah, we're, we're, don't worry, we'll get you here. If there's a riff, oh God, Jeff was my guy. Oh, uh, boy, I'm screwed now. Okay, prime example, Bret Hart, Montreal screw job. How many guys said they were upset and how many left? Rick Rude? Yeah. That's it, right? That was about it. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of those guys were very good friends with Bret Hart. One guy left. You're right. When it comes yeah, but to... Bret Hart wasn't controlling. Bret Hart didn't bring them into the company. Bret Hart wasn't the person who may have been keeping them in the company. Meaning Bret Hart wasn't a decision maker. He was just another performer. Granted, he had clout in the company. He was just another performer in WWE. I think this could have substantial well, ramifications. What do you think, who would you guess would, if, let's say, Jeff Jarrett is fired or he gets bought out, what wrestler in TNA would go, oh, geez, I really have no future here now? None. I don't think any would leave. Is this the shock that TNA needs? No, because... The only ones that know about it is the Internet community. It's not going to be the lead story on TNA Impact anytime soon. No. And the it fans could... that go to Impact aren't really wrestling fans, so they really wouldn't know about it either. No. 
They're looking at who's hot there. And TNA fans are a lot more in tune to the backstage happenings than WWE fans. Just like ECW's fans were, just like Ring of Honor's fans are, just like Dragon Gate's friends are, uh, fans are. Dragon's on here tonight. Oh, they debut. Uh, was it this past weekend or is it next weekend in Philly? Uh, but anyways, it, it, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, I it think could, this, it could this could it, rip the company apart. It, it it's going to implode the company if it's not handled right. There there's the key. And that's when, as you mentioned, Dixie comes out and says, guys, we're having a meeting. Here's the situation. We're going to get this all in the open and make it work. Stick with us. You know, better days are however she wants to smooth it. I mean, for me, I have no problem at all that Jeff Jarrett's hooking up with Karen Angle. Because, you know what, Karen Why and Kurt are divorced. <laughs> you know what, yeah. obviously they couldn't make it work. You know, and, 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 and if Jeff and Karen, if, if, if they can bring their Brady Bunch lifestyle together, that's great for them. <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's just a little bit too close to home right now. A little bit, yeah, a lot of it. It's in the front yard. Oh, if it, not in the den. It's yeah, it's yeah. working its way up the stairs. This is a huge controversy. Let's just put it that way. We talked about this for about thirty minutes on PWR Prime Time. So make sure you check that out. Came online at pwrshow.com just this past weekend. Uh, you can find that at pwrshow.com. Also airing in replays on Time Warner Cable Channel 14 in Milwaukee. And when we come back, we're going to talk about this a lot more, the controversy on the, in the top of TNA. Also, we're going to talk about what you thought so far was the pay-per-view of the month and also the show of the week from last week and uh, PWR Fantasy Draft Update. All that coming up next here on the Pro Wrestling Report at 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. As the sands of the hour pass, pass as time goes by, Jeff Jarrett, sleeping with Karen Angle, Kurt Angle, the top guy in his company. Yeah. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. We want to know what you guys have to say about this controversy in total nonstop action wrestling. You can call us at 276 276- ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN, 276-ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. We're also live in the Chatmosphere at PWRshow.com. Again, that's the Chatmosphere at PWRshow.com. Let's go to the phone lines. Line 2, Bowman from Boston. You're live on the Pro Wrestling Report. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Bowman. So, so uh, I guess we've got a lot to talk about here. Right? Oh, brother, oh, brother, uh, we and, do. And, and TNA and all this other stuff. Um, I guess I'll start off with TNA and just basically say, like, uh, that that's crossing the line there. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Just, there's just some things you just don't do, and, and unfortunately it went that route. To me, if, if there's if TNA wants, there's no, to me, no smooth way of this ever, gonna get, ever getting over to where it's going to be something normal again. The this car's total. This is basically, look, you look at the Montreal screw drop and the same effect. The same thing is basically there. But, um, you know, the best thing they can do is to try to turn it into a storyline and let Kurt walk after it's over. I mean, Let I, Kurt I, Angle leave the company? Hey, hey. You but guys, you, know, now, you know what, though? You guys are now just talking about Kurt Angle potentially leaving TNA or potentially kind of made it back to the WWE. And I said that within three years, about two months ago, on this show, that that, that will probably eventually happen. Well, but three years is a long time from it. now. But you doubted it, though, because the first thing you said, he's the face of TNA, he's the face of that, and I said, that doesn't matter. I guarantee you he'll be back. Here's a, here's an interesting thing I just remembered. Remember when that whole Kurt Angle, Jeff Jarrett uh, angle was going on back leading into Bound for Glory, and Kurt yeah. Angle was crossing the line so often with talking about Jarrett's past wife and things that his children, things that, quite frankly, were ticking Jarrett off, as he told us right here in the studio? Yeah. Now it makes a lot more sense as to why Jarrett may have let a lot of that stuff slide. Oh yeah, yeah. It, 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 that, that, to me, that's I, I, I had a feeling there was something more to that than what was being said in the storyline. I didn't have any idea it was this was this you know whole sort of you know Brady Bunch that thing is going on in the background. But there's something just something felt that was not right about that. Like they're not working the mic. The, 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 this is an old school where they used to do that type of stuff. They used to bury people. As hard as they could, that that that, that, that this, they don't do that anymore, like they do, like that used to do back then. You're right, uh, but the, you know nowadays with this 
internet and all the people talking, including this show, this stuff becomes front and center. It becomes top of the uh, top of uh, mind to a lot of fans out there. And uh, as I said, TNA is in a horrible situation. I think, unfortunately, now that the fans know about it, you almost have no choice but to try to spin this off into a storyline to try and smooth it over and see kind of what but the isn't there such a thing? Where it isn't there such a thing, Bowman, as being too close to home? It's professional wrestling. What isn't too close to home? <laughs> 86, okay? Well, this is, yeah. let's, 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 let's break into things. What, yeah. what haven't they done as close to home? I mean, if they let the Matt Hardy Edge thing that run the way it did, and they basically let Matt Hardy, let, let Edge and Lita sleep in the bed in the middle of the ring, how far do you think wrestling's going to go? You know. Yeah, but it, that it, wasn't it, the owner of the company sleeping with Lita. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that, that, that's definitely not it. This is definitely much worse, but it's almost like if the fans did not know about this, if it wasn't something that the fans knew and it wasn't getting around, they could possibly bury this, keep it in the back, keep it in the locker room. I mean, like I said, I out. can't blame well, they, Jeff Jarrett for doing what he's doing, okay? Karen Angle is a divorced woman. I guess the problem Dixie Carter has is that for the past, let's say since, what, August or September, uh-uh. They've made Jeff Jarrett be this wholesome family guy that only cares about his kids. And now, all of a sudden, he's involved in this big love triangle. And uh, Look at how long they've kept this under wraps. I, 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 I definitely, I, I would, I would blame Jeff Jarrett for what, he, for what he's doing. You, you, you're basically, you're looking at your top star, your top guy in your company, and you're going to sleep with his ex-wife. I'm sorry, that's just wrong. That's just wrong, no matter how you're going to say you don't blame him for doing it. Wrong is wrong in the end of the day, and this is something that's morally wrong. No, no, I agree with that. What I'm saying is, you know, Karen and Kurt obviously are divorced, you know, so I can get that. But, yeah, I, I agree that it is way too close. It's your top star. It's the guy you brought into the company but, to put your company on the map. And to the point about Karen and Kurt being divorced, uh, yeah, Kurt, Kurt didn't was, waste any yeah, time. Yeah, Kurt didn't waste any time He was all. rocking that con. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, but I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a different TV. He wasn't going sleeping with Karen's, you know, boss or something like that at her job or something like that. That, you know, that isn't something that's, that wasn't something he was doing over there. <laughs> In the chat atmosphere at PWRShow.com, the Chris 910 says Jeff and Karen should have a live sex celebration. A la Edge and Lita. Remember that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> with their five kids watching on pay-per-view. <laughs> A lot of people are saying this might be a work. Uh, it ain't, but it's Bowman, not, do you think no. so? No, I mean, they'll, they'll probably, the, the, the only way I think they can smooth it over is trying to turn it into look like it is. That's, that's about all I think they can do. If the news is already out there. The words are already out there. What can you do? Bowman, your thoughts on WWE Night of Champions tonight? I, th- I thought it was an okay pay-per-view. I thought it was good. But here's my thing. If this didn't have the spin of Night of Champions on it and the gimmick that that is on top of it, I don't think the same review will come off as well. Yeah, well, and they're, they're, they've seen that these gimmick pay-per-views have uh, been a lot more successful for them, at least in promotion. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, there was something special about knowing that finally they were going to defend every title on a pay-per-view, which in my opinion – and Most, I, if I'll, not all, of the titles should be dependent on every pay per view. And that, that, that's the only in your house I actually like to to order, which is not the champions. <laughs> in your house, uh, nice. They're, they're there in your house. So let's, let's get it straight. They're all in your house except for the big four. Uh, do you think but, they'll uh, give away a house again? Uh, at some point. How many people home. remember that? The first in your house was Mother's I'll Day, 1995. They gave away a house. They yeah, did, I remember yeah, they that. Did. Todd Petting Zoo, as Joe Cornette um, calls him. I, I um, if all the matches came off, you know. Well, um, you know the uh, the the, the Parker Hardy match. It was uh, I, I give him the credit for making it the main event. Giving these guys, you know, giving CM Punk the shot to be in the main event. I'm so glad he lost. It was I mean, funny, but you know, it, it, it all, all in all, I was in, it was an okay pay per view. I don't I don't think Dolph Ziggler was not going to win it to to Smack. At least another SmackDown or two. He'll win on a on a TV show. He won't win a pay per view match for with a title so soon just yet. So, but um. Dolph Ziggler reminds me of a blonde American male from WCW. Oh, <laughs> American male, not, not Scotty Riggs. Yeah, one of the two, but just blonde. That's about. That's, uh, a, that's it's about either Scotty one. Riggs or Buff Bagwell. Um, Scotty Riggs, the long hair. 
<laughs> Bowman from Boston, thanks for the uh, intelligent conversation, as usual, here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. In the chat atmosphere at PWRshow.com, user by the name of Punk 85 says, in regards to the controversy in TNA, uh, says, as I try to find it here, because it recently disappeared. Uh, basically, why is this such a big news story if you've got Triple H married to the daughter of Vince McMahon? Yes, there was no one else's ex-wife involved except for China, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, good point, good point there. Dave Hero at PWRShow.com. We asked the fans out there, which was the pay-per-view of the month? Obviously, voting has only occurred today, and the two competitors were TNA's Victory Road from last week and WWE Night of Champions from just tonight. The winner, beyond a shadow of a doubt, with 89%, 89% of the votes is WWE Night of Champions. TNA Victory Road scoring 11%. And 11 was probably the number of pay-per-view buys they had on the last show. <laughs> Another poll at PWRshow.com. Show of the week for this week, TNA Impact meet uh, Dave. Wow. That guy's not here anymore. TNA Impact with 41.4% of the votes. WWE SmackDown coming in a close second with 37.9% of the votes. And Raw following at a distant third with 21% of the votes. So last week, fans thought TNA Impact was the better show. I was at the taping uh, and have not watched the full broadcast version, but they explained a lot this past Thursday on Impact. You know, we got to make some phone calls and see what's going on. There's been a lot of rumors about Tracy Brooks and some uh, adult magazine coming out. Did you just say that? Well, it's, it's rumors. It's all the Internet. We'll have to you know, try to get her on the show. On Is the everything show. you see on the Internet true? Well, no, but I didn't hear about that until I saw it, you know. What was that, yesterday? Jeremy Borash talking about it? JB. You know, and Tracy's a former GLCW ladies champion. i got to find out what's going on. You know, there's like a code of uh, ethics thing, you know, when you're a GLCW superstar. Can't do that kind of stuff. What is TNA going to do with Taz after the Samoa Joe thing? Uh, Taz explained himself, explained why he was there. Note how he didn't talk bad about WWE. They actually cut out some of that promo because he mentioned talking or covering matches at WrestleMania and pretty much spoke a lot more highly of WWE they than they aired. It? You know, it's like, why would they let Taz go out there and talk about WrestleMania, you know, in, in ECW? I don't get that. But um, Well, do you think the fans... <laughs> We've said this many a time. I mean, Taz, is, he's been in the business for a long time. He was certainly one of the most recognizable talents in WWE for a number of, time, number of years when he was on SmackDown doing color commentary. But is this really an impactful addition to the TNA team? I, I don't think it helps TNA whatsoever. I mean, Paul Heyman said it best, that TNA needs to focus on building their own talents aside from signing old WWE commentators. That's what Paul Heyman said. Yeah, well, Paul and Taz, you know, they ended it. Doesn't Paul still owe him a few bucks? A few. He, owes, he, <laughs> he even owes Al Snow from that pay-per-view main event how many years ago. Wow. Did I just say that out loud? <laughs> You're shooting tonight, huh? No, I just wasn't thinking. You know, it's, it's it's just sitting in this chair. Sometimes you say things without thinking. It's you know? getting late. That's yeah, what's happening. Absolutely. Shaq is the host on Raw tomorrow night. Love it. Shaquille O'Neal is the guest host on Raw tomorrow night. Jeremy Piven is going to be the August 3rd host from Entourage. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Freddy Krueger, Krueger, whatever his name is. Where did that come from? Was this something he said at Comic-Con? At Comic-Con. That's where a lot of rumors start at Comic-Con lately. Where does this go? How long can they do this guest host thing? And will we have I to think, deal with I the... I think it goes through the summer. Will we have to endure the ZZ Tops of the world that so that we brutal. can get the Ted DiBiase's did, did, of the world? Did you finally see that? I have not watched that episode, no. It was like ZZ Top wasn't even there. But I think Shaq would be very entertaining. Do you think he's going to ma- get, in the, get into yeah. a little bit of action? Yes. Can he? Will Shaq the NBA allow it? Santino. Ooh. Yet but they, you know what, though? Shaq and Carlito have some heat, too, from way back a few years ago when uh, Shaq took out Carlito with a chair shot back at a rock show in Miami. Paul Hogan. What Why saying, wouldn't they? What they're saying is never going to happen. Why not? How many nevers have we heard as it pertains well, to the WWE nevers, and Hulk Hogan? I never thought Sable would come back, and she you know, showed up again. This is for all the men who came to see me and all the ladies who want to be me. Yes. The 38 Special. What does that mean? That's what she called herself. The 38 Special. 
This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. We'll be back in just a moment with more of the Pro Wrestling Report. The fan club. I was the proprietor and proud founder of the Aldo Montoya fan club in 1996. The jack strap on the head, huh? Here's why I cheered for Aldo. You want to know the secret? Yeah. yeah. It was right here in the Mecca Arena at the time. A pin was dropping. He was wrestling somebody. It was a house show. And uh, I, me and my friend Brian Westerman were there, and I said, I'm going to start cheering for this guy. And I started cheering for him because he would hear it, obviously, because nobody else was cheering for him. And then it actually sort of morphed into me actually being a fan of Aldo Montoya. That's just an incredible story. Let's go to the PWR phone lines. Line two, we've got Gianni, who's been holding patiently for quite a while. Gianni, you're live on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Oh, hey, guys. What's going on? I just, I just had a few things I wanted to uh, touch on. Uh, first off, I know we're talking about the Jeff Jarrett thing right now. Uh, honestly, I view it as you have two choices. One, take it, run with it with a storyline, try to make something happen out of it, or... Don't put it on TV. Forget about it. Just deal with it in your personal life. That's my uh, my view on it. You know, but uh, maybe maybe Dixie will resign like Sarah Palin did today. I doubt that to get away from the media. Maybe or you could I listened stay- to her farewell speech today. What'd you think? I have no idea what she said. I can't follow that woman. She's dynamic. She's a bumbling. Wow. Maybe she the- bumbles. Maybe they'll do that with Jared, but keep him around in the back quietly. Yeah, I, the TNA's gonna they got a big mountain to climb to get out of get out of this one. And but Jeff Jarrett is. The king of the mountain. Absolutely. Gianni, what did you think of WWE Night of Champions tonight? Actually that was the uh, next thing I was just gonna mention. Uh honestly I did not catch the I caught the last three matches of it, honestly. Um I thought the overall the three matches I saw, I saw the Divas match, the Dolph Ziggler and Mysterio and the Jeff Hardy punk match. Um, I liked the Mysterio match with Ziggler. I was hoping Ziggler would win. Either way, the feud could still go. You know, Mysterio goes for the title back, but now they're going to keep Ziggler going for it. Uh, I thought it was a a good pay-per-view, just because I know everybody talks about being a, a damn mark these days. I honestly, not a mark, I you can talk crap about me or whatever, but I am a wrestling fan. Now, that be careful. What? Be careful, because right after we're done with this car, we're going to talk about uh, my markism or alleged markism for TNA and a couple of the fam- uh, comments that the fans had from last week's episodes. But I think, uh, Gianni, that is what we all are, our wrestling fans and you have an opinion about one company or one person at one time, one week, one day, and all of a sudden you're a mark for that company just because other people disagree with your opinion. But it is true. It is possible to be a wrestling fan. Exactly. And I know I I wanted to get your opinion on this, um, but I believe, like, if you look, like, look at the, every company in the wrestling business starts out as a wrestling company, but eventually they become a TV company. And now if you look at it, Mm -hmm. The major company that did that out of business. ECW? Or WCW, rather? WCW. Oh, they were a TV ECW company before ECW did wrestling. not have enough time for that to happen. Well, the only thing WCW is is a defunct wrestling company purchased by WWE in 2001. Exactly. And now, I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm looking at the WWE's product. I'm looking at a wrestling fan. Uh, tonight's pay-per-view was a good wrestling show, but they're an entertainment company now. Yeah. They are ratings. That's all they care about. Ratings Gianni, that, money. that's an excellent point. We do have to cut you short as we're running short on time here. Uh, but, yeah, uh, that's what ultimately killed WCW because, remember, it was the cancellation of the TV programs that put the nail in the coffin for that program. ECW pretty much ran out of money because of their television uh, ventures. And now TNA has got uh, Spike TV telling them what to do at times. So, uh, you know... It's frustrating. It's frustrating at times because you do just want to see good wrestling. And um, Let's go to some of the comments from last week's radio show, Dave. 
All right. I was in Orlando, Florida, coming off the heels of TNA uh, Victory Road, uh, and there. Calling from catering. <laughs> There were a lot of people who disagreed with a lot of things I had to say about that pay-per-view. And from my recollection about my review of that pay-per-view, I'm not sure when I said it was a great pay-per-view. I'm not sure when I said it was a good pay-per-view. I simply spoke about the matches and the live event experience. I readily admitted I had not seen the broadcast version and also conceded that at times, I, I'm sorry, I also conceded that the TV version, the broadcast version, probably didn't come off as good as it did live because that's generally the case anywhere you go. But one person on our YouTube channel said, uh, Matt Morgan is absolutely horrible. I can't believe how hard Damian was on his, well, uh, he can't cut a promo. He can barely talk. He still needs to finish up his time in OVW. He can't put on a decent match, let alone a good one. He is awful. The fact that Damian really liked this god-awful pay-per-view and was all over Matt Morgan made me lose a lot of respect for him. I didn't think you were all over it. You know, I think Matt Morgan is a good worker. I think Matt Morgan has a ton of potential. We just haven't used him properly yet. Is it the robe thing? That drives me nuts. <laughs> $20,000 robe. You dump it off. <laughs> Nobody had a $20,000 robe since Ric Flair did. Uh, it's a 20000 I mean, It has the DNA logo on it. Oh, yeah. twenty grand. But it, And that's to my point earlier. You know, we... This show's all about opinions. We all have different opinions here, and all the people in the atmosphere right now, those listening have different opinions now uh, out there. And we, we have we, the right opinions. <laughs> <laughs> we encourage everyone to share those opinions, and as long as you can have intelligent discussion to back it up, we'll certainly listen to it and, and debate you on it. Uh, another uh, comment on our uh, YouTube channel, reference our radio show from last week right here on 540 ESPN. Uh, quote-unquote, sorry, but almost 99%, PWR being the only 1% of people who saw this pay-per-view said it was absolute garbage and the worst of the year. I agree with another poster. Clearly they're speaking good about TNA because of their quote-unquote partnership. They obviously don't want to, them to stop giving them superstars to interview. So even if it's a horrible pay-per-view, they will talk about it like it was pretty good. Wow. I don't think it's like that at all. I mean, you know, yeah, there is a relationship, I guess, there, but it's not like we're... We have a relationship with WWE as well. Right. Interesting. Well, yeah, that's but, not worth defending. I mean, no, I mean like I said, entitled Damian, to your opinion. you like TNA. You like the younger stars. You're an AJ Styles fan. So you you yourself want this company to succeed. I have always cheered for the underdog. Now, people are going to say, what? That doesn't make any sense. WWE was the underdog in the WCW WWE yes, days. Yes, it was. TNA is the underdog to WWE. I am anti establishment. WWE is the arrogant prick on top of the mountain. TNA is that little buggy climbing that winding road around to the top of the mountain. It's the choo-choo train. <laughs> is it diesel or is it steam? Well, it's diesel is not TNA. So I, yeah, I nice. Say You're good yeah. tonight. You're on yeah. it with the funds, huh? I love that, huh? You, you ate your Wheaties this morning. But, um, you know, yeah, so do I like TNA? Absolutely. Do I like going down to the TNA events? Absolutely. Do I like going to WWE events? Absolutely, I don't. I, the, the, you can't compare the two companies and, and to like one or the over the other. Which I, I've never said I like one over the other. Uh, I've been accused by accused. people in this very studio. I've even said it, but, hey, but I say it in, in you know in fun because it's good to see someone still cares about wrestling, and that's what Damian Nelson does. He still cares about wrestling. He wants to see you know companies succeed and do well. And unless there's someone out there that's you know, trying to find the good in it, I mean, we, we can all find the bad in everything. Oh, yeah. It's harder to find the good in something. Another comment uh, referenced last week's show on ESPN Radio said, uh, no, nah, you're wrong, Reference another poster. They talk bad about TNA just how they do WWE. Maybe, just maybe, you're not a PWR fan like I am. PWR fans like us, and they criticize both brands. If 10 fans think TNA's pay-per-view sucked and one fan likes it, it does not mean that that one fan... Is a suck up. I, you know what? Uh, what was it? Back in March, early April, Mick Foley was in town, and him. We were talking about TNA. He's called me cynical. He's like, you I'm, got, you got in trouble. I did get in trouble. I, I'm just not a big fan of any product right now. It's all about the money. It's all about the discussion. Let me clear one thing up right now for anybody who thinks that the five of you out there that do TNA ain't paying us a dime. We, like many other media outlets, request interviews, request access to shows. They grant it. But we you do, do the get same catering thing. when you're down there. <laughs> we do the same thing with WWE. 
We've had conversations with World Wrestling Entertainment, and for various reasons, they're not as open with their talent as TNA is. But Mr. Kennedy is. And he'll be on this program next week. We got an email from Trace in Alabama, I believe, to PWRshow.com that says, If Angle leaves TNA, I think the only person that could replace him is Ken Anderson. You know what? Certain people in TNA are looking forward to Mr. Anderson showing up. Certain people. Well, certain people. I mean, if it, I don't know if it's the Jeff Jarrett side or the Kurt Angle side, but I mean, uh, I think Ken Anderson can definitely help because, you know, I like Bobby Lashley. I think now they could use a Ken Anderson as guys to come in and feud with the Mafia. Another email. This one has uh, some, some questions for us, basically. Uh, from Big Louie 1988 says, Hi, I'm a big fan of your show, but I am a huge TNA mark. If you had the chance to bring, now see, if I were running for political office, that sound bit there would be would be pulled out and there'd be a, a Swiss boat ad against me. Uh, I'm a big fan of your show. <laughs> Already <but> done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tillman. But I'm a huge TNA mark. If you had, the, you want me to say that slower? Uh, if you had the chance to bring back three TNA stars, such as Monty Brown, Chris Harris, Petey Williams, in what direction would you put their characters in TNA? Who would I bring back? Three TNA stars? Yeah. Christian, Jeff Hardy. Who would the third one be? Eh, that's really about it. What do you think, Damien? Christian, uh, Jeff Petey Hardy. Williams, Sanjay Dutt. You'd bring them back? I want the X Division. Wouldn't and you have... I'd like to continue to see the single greatest finishing move, maneuver in the history of professional wrestling, that is the Canadian awesome. Destroyer. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's that's why maybe the buy rates are down. Maybe that's why the ratings are down. No, it's because they had two guys in Christian <laughs> and Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy, especially Jeff Hardy. How can you let that guy go? Now he's become a bigger star than ever when, oh, obviously, Jeff Hardy was, was in a different place when he was in TNA. But, I mean, how silly do they look that they had that guy and couldn't do anything with him? That's a good point. I don't know who the third would be. That's sad if you think about it. Yeah. Oh, come on. Admit it. You want Curry Man. You know what? Curry yeah. Man was a great gimmick. Curry Man was awesome. You know, and, and that's a great point, Tillman, in the booth. I'm a big fan of Christopher Daniels. He does amazing work. I'm not wait, sure wait, if it's... Wait, wait, wait. We're talking about Curry Man right now. He played Curry Man. Really? Did Christopher. Don't you dare. Christopher Daniels? You knew that. Come on now. I thought now. he was fired. <laughs> They no, he him actually back under beat a mask? <laughs> Wow. Um, now, see, but he, here's where TNA dropped the ball on Curry Man. He was over. Kids loved him. Did they make a Curry Man mask and sell him? Nope. No. Did they make a Shark Boy mask and sell him? No. Nope. Did they have a Super Eric cape and sell those? No. That's why TNA fails, because their marketing is so bad. But what point did I make last week right here on this very program? AJ Styles. They're... Does mm, he have a T-shirt? Yeah, a, a few. I haven't seen it. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not no, out there? I haven't seen Why it. Why is all Jeff Hardy's stuff on sale? Because he's done with the company. <laughs> His last match is SummerSlam. <laughs> we said that a Dude, few weeks ago. Listen, we said that a few months ago. Yeah. And these these people in here who talk about all we do is get our news from other sites, which is a complete lie, you look back. I, I'll find out which week it was. We said here in this verse, I guaranteed, mm -hmm. guaranteed, that SummerSlam would be Chris, I'm sorry, uh, Jeff Jarrett's last match with WWE. Guaranteed Jeff Hardy. it. We did Jeff Hardy. That. He said Jeff Jarrett. Oh, yeah. It oh. Was, yeah, Jeff Hardy. I'm fired up. Fire me. I'm already fired. You suck. Anyways, enough tooting our own horn. Um, Monday night. Not tomorrow. Next week, Monday night. Right here. Uh, huge interview. We had X-Pac on most recently. He does, does he work for TNA? No, he's not Okay, TNA so that guy. wasn't booked. All right. Uh, we have Ken Anderson formerly Ken Kennedy of WWE, here on this program. Dave, it's his first interview since his release. He's got a lot to talk about. Lot. You're excited to feel these nipples. His release was unexpected. we got to do some word association, like John ha. Cena. That could be the best. That Triple could be the H. best word association. <laughs> that could be the best word association Bob since Holly. we did it with Jim Cornette. we got to find that clip of what he said about Vince Russo. Jim Cornette. we got to get him on the show, too. I don't think we have enough uh, dump buttons. Oh, yeah. I know Tillman can pull it off. Do you think if we got Corny on the show, we can drive to the nearest Dairy Queen and... Yes, reenact the whole video? Order some food? Oh, without a doubt. We'll film it in HD. Yes. <laughs> yes. Speaking of HD, let's go to our VI3. 
the top three names in professional wrestling this week as we see them. We pick one singles competitor, we pick one female competitor, and we pick one tag team competitor. And since I caught Dave Hero off guard, I'll start with mine. My singles competitor goes to the Viper, Randy Orton. I am not sure. I am not sure there's a better heel in the business right now than Randy Orton. Mannerisms, in-ring performance, overall demeanor, you just have to hate that man. I agree, but for me, I'm going to go with Dolph Ziggler. I never thought in a million years when he first debuted that people would be looking to him to beat Rey Mysterio for a title. He, he took the ball and ran with it tonight, almost at the touchdown. My female spot goes to somebody who I never expected to see the match I saw tonight out of, and that would be Michelle McCool. Well, see, I'm going to go with Melina, because if it wasn't for Melina, Michelle McCool doesn't have that match. Now, is that just like, well, never mind. No, no, go ahead. No, 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 no really. Uh, the horse is dead. Hey, if you're hot, just say you're hot. No, it's actually warm in here. I turned the air conditioner on. <laughs> Tell me, you're just going buck wild in there, aren't you? Uh, and my tag team spot goes to Fear. That's where you say money. Money. Incorporated the uh, TNA tag team superstars. Dave, your VI3. My tag team, Chris Jericho and the Big Show. Because right now, there is not a team out there that can beat them. Not even beer money. <clears throat> you think beer money can beat them? You're entitled to your America? opinion. The world's largest world's largest athlete? There's no way. All right. That's your, your opinion. You're entitled to it. Where's Meathead? You know what? I don't know. Unfortunately, due to his antics last week, with the fantasy draft. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't think you should talk about it. That's what got him in trouble in the first place. It's only a week. He'll be back. This week on uh, Pro Res- on the uh, Pro Wrestling Report Primetime, Time Warner Cable Channel 14 and at PWRShow.com, we've got another episode of 10 Best, Dave Hero. You sat in with us on that episode of 10 Best, and it was the 10 Best Wrestling Faction of all time. That was a fun one, too. It was, uh, you know, going into it, and this was suggested by one of our followers on Twitter by the name of Jim Kamira. Uh, didn't think we'd be able to come up with ten of them, but then when you really dig deeper into it and look at it, there are a lot of factions out there there's and a lot of them. iterations of different factions. So many different Four Horsemen. Uh, there's the NWO, original NWO, and then there's the Wolfpack. Rhode Island-sized NWO. And there's Latino World Order. Uh, so that is uh, going to be available at PWRShow.com this week. Uh, the top ten best, uh, ten best stables or factions in professional wrestling. It'd be interesting to see what five groups made all three of our lists. What five groups made all three of our lists? Uh, and that's coming up this week. And the Boricuas is not one of them. PWRShow.com. Also, this week, this week marks the end of this month's PWR Rewards. Remember, PWRShow.com is the only site that does pay you back, and we don't charge you for any of the content or over inundate you with ads. So come on over to PWRShow.com, and you can win a cash prize just for logging in and engaging with the site. Next Monday night, it is Kennedy right here on this very program, and that's going to be a doozy of an interview I'm looking forward to. I'm going to actually do a little bit of prep for that interview. You know what? Uh, talking to Ken, he's not afraid to answer any questions. Make sure you check out PWR Primetime. It's the 10 best stables or factions of professional wrestling coming up this week for the cause. For Dave Hero, this is Damian Nelson saying thanks for tuning in to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. We'll see you next Monday night where we bring Ken Kennedy to Mr. You. Anderson, dot, 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 Anderson. <laughs>